Good day, people of God. It's Pastor Jeremiah. We'd like to hear the word of God for the week. But before we do so, let us start with a word of prayer. So in reverence to our Heavenly Father, let us bow our head and let us pray. Abba Father, blessed Savior, Almighty King, glorious God, we thank you for this new occasion, new opportunity given unto us to be found in your presence. And we pray, asking you, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you take control of this moment, surrounding yourself, body, soul, and spirit, mind and heart, the air, the atmosphere, the heaven above us and around us, into your mighty hand, and asking for your mercy, praying that you forgive us for whatever we may have done, said, or thought that did not honor or glorify you, and that you sanctify and purify us with the blood of Jesus Christ and the word of purification, and that you purge your conscience from any deadly works that we able to serve you as we're supposed to. We pray also, Almighty God, that you take us deeper and deeper into the understanding and revelation of your truth. And we stand against anything that opposes itself against your, uh, your truth, against your word. For your word is the truth. And we bind them and cast them into the pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. And we proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. So let us take our main passage of the Holy Scripture. In the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 1 to 10. So reading the word of God. In the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 1 to 10 in the name of Jesus Christ. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, traveling in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour a child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And a child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three scores days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was there place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. May the Lord bless his word. May it come full of understanding, revelation, grace, life, and blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. For this week, the Lord would like to speak to us about the woman clothed with the sun. The woman clothed with the sun. So the title of our teaching for the week is the woman clothed with the sun. Jesus Christ prophesied about something which contained all the characteristics that the woman described in our main passage of the Holy Scripture has. Luke chapter 21 verse 25 which says and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring hence we can see that the woman in our main passage of the holy scriptures has all the characteristics described in the prophecy that Jesus Christ gave in Luke chapter 21 verse 25 she has the stars upon her head, the moon under her feet, and she's clothed with the sun. 
This woman is actually the image of the Mosaic Church. The church that came from the ministry of Moses. For in the time of Moses, Jesus Christ had not yet come physically. And this is depicted by the fact that our main passage of the Holy Scripture introduces this particular woman before she had given birth. This therefore depicts the church in the time of Moses. And the Word of God says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 12, He that has the Son has life, and he that has not the Son of God has not life this therefore this is therefore revealing unto us that the son that the woman is about to bring into the world is actually jesus christ and it was imperative for jesus christ to have come physically on earth because he is the one who gives the true life he is the one who gives eternal life. This woman is clothed with the sun. And we know that the sun produces light upon the earth. In other words, in the, in the world. And the word of God says in John chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. This implies that the church of God. In the time of Moses. Had the light of the word of God. In the form of the ten commandments. But the author of this commandment or of this word Jesus Christ was not yet physically manifest it had yet taken it had not yet taken a physical body hence the church in the time of Moses only had the ten commandment and as a result of the fact that the author of this word meaning Jesus Christ was not yet come Thus the moon was under her feet, which means that the woman had the moon as foundation. The moon was what kept her standing. But the moon is the reflection or the shadow of the sun. For the moon only reflects the light of the sun. It is not the sun itself, but only its reflection. Hence, this particular woman stands on the moon, which is the reflection of the sun. In other terms, the woman stands on the reflection of the sun. But the moon is the reflection of the shadow of the sun. For the sun only reflects the light of the for for for, for the moon only reflects the light of the sun. In normal terms. When we have the light of the sun, we do not need the light of the moon. I repeat, in normal terms, in normal standing, when we have the light of the sun, we do not need the light of the moon. In other words, when the sun gives its light upon people, the moon is not needed. This is to say that when we are clothed with the sun, the moon should no longer be the thing upon which we stand. When we are clothed with the sun, the moon should no longer be, no longer be a foundation. Hence, when the sun is truly playing its role upon us, the moon must therefore be stepped upon. The moon must be trampled upon because the light of the sun is more than enough for us. But the church in the time of Moses, though they had the light, they were still having the shadow as for a foundation. And this is why the word of God says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 17, 
which are the shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 had to say, For the law is only a shadow of the good things to come, not the realities of themselves. It can never, by the same sacrifices, offer year by after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. So, the church of Moses, who only had the law, were therefore living by the shadow. They were, they had as a foundation the shadow of the things to come, the shadow of the real thing, of the real word of God. This is to say that we have the light of the word of the, the light of the word of God if we have Jesus Christ. If we have Jesus Christ, we do not need anything else. I repeat, if we have the light of the word of God, if we have Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ is the word of God, we do not need anything else. Because that is the real thing. That is the sun. And this is not the shadow. The woman had also upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And these 12 stars represent the 12 tribe of Israel. And the 12 tribes of Israel were led by three types of powers. The king, the priest, and the Sanhedrin. Another term, the judges. These were the, ju the people that were judging the people of Israel. The word king in Hebrew means malak, which refers to the law. Hence, the first power was characterized by the law. And the priest, which is the second power, was characterized by the priesthood. And the Sidren, the third power, was characterized by the judge. Hence, these were the three powers that were regulating the twelve tribes of Israel. And our main passage of the Holy Scripture tells us that the dragon cast down one third of the stars. This is a prophecy to say that one third of the powers that were regulating the 12, star, the 12 tribes of Israel will be overthrown by the dragon, not way by Satan. And the power that will be overthrown by Satan is the kingship. And this is why the word of God says in Revelation chapter 2 verse 13, I know your works and where you dwell. Even where Satan's seat is, and you hold fast my name, and has not denied my faith, even in those days where in Antipas my was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. So another term, the church dwell where the throne of Satan is established if the throne it means the king is no more there so satan has become the king because he sits upon the throne this simply means that satan who is also called the prince of darkness will overthrow the king in other words satan will remove the law which represents the power of the king hence the church will be without law. In other terms, the church will be without the word of God. And if the church is without the word of God, it simply means that the church will be in darkness. For the word of God is the light even as the book of Psalm declares in Psalm 119 verse 105, says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thus, if the church is in darkness, 
It means that Satan is not reigning over the church because Satan is called the prince of darkness. And this is what it means the dragon will overthrow one third of the stars of heaven. This implies that Satan will remove one third of the power of the church. Which means that Satan will replace the word of God in the church so that the church be in darkness. And because Satan is the prince of darkness, he will thus be in charge of the church. He will be reigning over the church. Hence, every local church where the true word of God is not the main focus, where the true word of God is not pre preponderant, where the true word of God is not the, the major uh, thing, Satan reigns over that particular local church. And this is called a coup d'etat over the church. And how does Satan actually put a local church in darkness? He will make sure that during the service of the local church, it will mostly be about prophecies, deliverances, miracles, and so on. So it will be all about shows, spectacles. But there will be very little or no time to preach or teach the true word of God. And according to the kingdom of darkness, this is called logical possession. So every local church where the word of God is not, the true word of God is not, or has little uh, um, place, the kingdom of darkness will possess that church. Hence, if one power is removed or overthrown, it remains two powers, which are the priesthood and the Saint Dread. This signifies that the church will not be regulated only by the priests and the judges. But the word of God will be absent or missing. And the woman is not taken into the wilderness so that she could give birth. Whereas the wilderness, in this instance, is a symbol of being set apart. It is a symbol of consecration. Not that John the Baptist started his ministry in the wilderness. And Jesus Christ start, also started his ministry by being tempted by Satan in the wilderness. This is a prophecy about the church that God will be taking his church into a time of consecration. And because in the wilderness there is no water, Satan will cast out water from his mouth as the book of Revelation tells us in Revelation chapter 12 verse 13 to 17 which says and when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as flowed after the woman that she, he might cause her to be carried away of the flood and the earth the the earth had the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallow up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth and the dragon was rough with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of a seed which kept the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is a prophecy to say that the same way the people of Israel were in the wilderness without Jesus Christ who is the living water Hence, because the church will be also in the wilderness, thus Satan want to produce waters so that the church could drink of that water because 
in the wilderness there is no war and this is actually the prophecy of the antichrist that satan will use to bring a new doctrine in order to try to deviate the church of god from the true doctrine of the word of god that's what the bible says he spoke is is he he cast out water from his mouth so that he may cause the, the the woman to be carried away by the flood in other words he want to use false doctrines to deviate the church to take the way to carry away the church in false by false doc with false doctrines and this is the fight of the church of god today the false doctrine for satan wants all the local churches to be driven by false doctrines and satan will send many preachers and teachers prophet and so on in order to pretend coming to quench the thirst of the people of, of, of god for the word of god but actually these false servants of god sent by satan are coming to introduce false doctrines among the people of god hence the people of god must be very careful in these last days in which we are living but for those who truly fear god they will be clothed with the son of righteousness the son of righteousness who is jesus christ hence they will remain firm in the true doctrine of the word of god and this is why god said the following through the prophet malachi malachi chapter 4 verse 2 which says but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stone hence we want to pray to say thank you heavenly father almighty god thank you for this revelation of your holy scriptures and i pray in the name of jesus christ so that you cause your church on earth not to stand on the shadow or the reflection of your word but that we stand on your very word itself by living it and let your word be the foundation of our lives let your word be the thing upon which we stand so that we can be like unto a wise man who built his house upon the rock and as a result despite the fact that the wind and the storm rise against the house it still stands firm because it is built upon the rock. Hence, let our lives be built upon you, Jesus Christ, for you are the rock of ages. And I pray also, Abba Father, so that you do not let us believe in any other doctrine, but only the true doctrine of your word. For Lord Jesus Christ, you are the living water. Hence, let us always drink of your living water so that we may always have eternal life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, the only true God, glorious Savior. Thank you, for I believe that you have answered me accordingly. May you be forever exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.